Hello. Hello, it's Robert here. Oh, hi. Good afternoon. Afternoon. How are you? Not too bad, thank you. Um, I got home in time, so um, I'm uh, all ears. <laughs> OK. Right, so let's um, make sure that I'm answering the right question or questions. Um, if I remember rightly, your question related to tithe. Yes. And whether or not it had application now or if it just if, if it only applied to Jews in sort of like if you like Old Testament times um, yes it mentions tithing being fruit and food in Leviticus 27 30 and then it says in Leviticus 27 34 four verses later that this commandment which was part of the Levitical law was given for the nation of Israel so I, I don't see tithing, you see, as being given to Gentiles or to Gentile nations, only to Israel. Okay. Well, I don't think it's quite it's surprising because of, because of the context of Leviticus, because Leviticus contains laws given at Sinai to the Jews. Right? So they were forming a nation, they were becoming a nation after leaving... Uh, Egypt, um, because obviously prior to that they weren't a nation, it was just um, Jacob and his sons and their families that entered Egypt. By the time they're leaving Egypt, now they're a, a people because they've grown mm -hmm. greatly in number. Yeah, so you start to see God's exercise of building them into an organized nation, and with that, He's giving them, you know, laws on how they should practice religion, how they should practice agriculture, how they should practice, you know, civil laws, etc., etc. And within that, he's giving them um, guidance regards their returning of tithe, uh, uh, and particularly, specifically, the, under that system, they would have given the tithe to the temple. Uh, no, yeah. no, I, I don't think it says anywhere in the Bible that people are to return a tithe. That's the first thing. Could you show me where does the Bible talk about people returning tithes? Secondly, they pay... Are we talking about the Jews or are we talking about in general? What are we talking about? Tithing. I don't believe tithing is for Christians. I don't believe there's any command in the New Testament for Christians to be under some uh, either tithe law of the uh, of the mosaic covenant or some pagan form of tithing where if you fought a battle on someone's land somebody else's land then the owner of the land got 10 percent of the spoils that was a pagan custom which was applied in um, genesis 14. i, I okay. don't think tithing's got anything to do with christianity or the christian church so okay let's 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 read the question what system of what system of finance would you have for the for the Christian church? A biblical system, what the Bible says. Which, I'm saying uh, now, Christian church 2021. How would you finance that church? Well, I wouldn't. How, how? I, I, I wouldn't. I think most of it should collapse. Because I, I don't believe most of it serves God. I'm not saying there aren't genuine Christians in each of the denominations. But I think the system itself is now so corrupt and so given over to scamming people for money. I just don't believe uh, I, I don't believe it serves God. And, and I think letting it collapse would be a mercy. That's quite a strong indictment. I mean, to OK, I, I think we can accept that there's corruption in many organizations, whether Christian or non-Christian, you know, and good people and bad people. But to say all all Christian organization is is corrupt and should collapse if if that's your starting premises, then I don't know what I would say that would that would that would change your mind well do you do you do you do you my understanding comes in yeah. relation to yeah to well, to a system where where believers give in order to support no the no work no 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 I'm, I'm not talking about giving. 
I'm not interested in giving, I'm interested in tithing. Tithing is not giving, giving is not tithing. In the New Testament, they gave to support the saints. Um, they, they, they didn't give to support sort of one-man band pastors. Um, I believe... Oh, well, that's a completely different thing. I'm not... That, that's a completely different... That's it. That's, that's what you call it. That's independent ministry. Well, let me just... That's something quite different. Let me, let me just ha hang on. Um... Uh, and I, I don't support one man, one, 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 one man pastoral systems. They may do that, and if, if other people want to support that, that's up to them. But I, mm. that's not something I, I, I support at all. And I don't speak on behalf of all of Christianity. There's hundreds of denominations, and I can't speak on behalf of them. I'm more interested in mm. what does the Bible say and how we can yes. apply it. H having had a past involvement with evangelical Christians... Um, I just don't believe very much of it is of God. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry if that offends you. I've never been a Seventh-day Adventist, but what I've seen of Pentecostal and Baptist, and I was brought up a Catholic, what I've seen of those organisations, I don't believe very much of it is of God. Now, I'm not saying, I'm definitely not saying that every single person and every single Pentecostal, Baptist or Roman Catholic church is unsaved. I do believe there are saved people in all of the denominations, including the ones I've named, but they're kind of saved in spite of the uh, corrupt teachings of their churches. Um, could I just read one Corinthians? Well, we're, saved. We're, saved by, we're saved by grace through Jesus Christ. We're not saved by individuals. We're not saved of the name of our denomination. We're saved by, by Jesus Christ. Well, that's what everyone says, but in practice, really, uh, um, they Well, I'm saying that's what Jesus says. Yes, that's what Jesus says, but that's not what a lot of modern church leaders say. They will really, if you read between the I lines... I'd rather what, trust what Jesus says. What, what yeah, Jesus, I, 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 would, agree, I would agree with you. Says, that's up to them, but I'd, I'd rather trust what he says. Yeah, but I think it, if you read between the lines, what most people are basically saying is if you come to me and my organisation, you can be saved, because a lot of people see religious leaders as a sort of mediator between them and Jesus. You get to Jesus... Through the religious leaders, could, could I read I don't one Corinthians? In any such teaching. I, I don't teach it. I don't practice. No, no, I'm not asking you about you believe. I'm talking about that's my own background when I was in the evangelical church. They will okay. say people are saved by grace through faith alone, but in reality, really, the pastor is the mediator between you and Jesus. You can't get to Jesus unless you go to the church building, and you go to Jesus through the Pentecostal preacher. Or through the Catholic yeah, priest. That's not that's not something that we teach. But I'm not asking about what you teach. I'm saying it, but we don't. We yeah. don't teach that because and, and we don't teach it not because as a matter of opinion because we don't see that in the Bible. We, we just don't see it there. Don't don't see what. Um, a system which which uh, by which you your your doorway to Christ or to God is through the pastor. But I would agree with you. But but that's what I have encountered in the past they yeah, won't overtly yeah. they won't overtly say that but if you read between the lines that really is their position you know if, if, yeah. you, if you're not a churched person you're not a saved person because if you were a saved yeah. person you'd go to a um a group a building called a church and you'd be under the authority of a one-man band pastor and you'd be paying him a tithe and um, people who don't do that obviously um, they might believe in Jesus, but they're not really true Christians, because true Christians are humble. They're in submission to a pastor. Could I read 1 Corinthians 16? I'm not in submission to a pastor. No, I'm, I'm, I, I'm not saying you are, but I'm saying that's what I've come across in my past in the evangelical okay. church. Do you want to go ahead and read what you wanted to? Yeah, it's 1 Corinthians 16 verse 1. Now concerning the collection for the saints... As I have given orders to the churches of Galatia, so you must do also. Um, the collection isn't, I'm just, I'm not in any way pointing the finger at you, sir, but I'm just pointing out the collection is for the saints. There was a famine in the land, so they were helping people. They weren't making a collection for the pastor or for the church leaders. It was a collection for the saints. But that's the only point I'm, why, I'm making. Why did you think to contact me? In particular, why why did you contact me? Because I believe that the Seventh Day Adventist Church 
very strongly encourage tithing. You believe it's part of the law, which still applies yes, today. Yes, but we don't. We don't. But uh, the tithing is not to the pastor. I'm not. I'm not saying you do. In this church, we don't. We don't believe in such a system. I'm not saying nobody t ties directly to the pastor. They charge, they tithe to the church denomination, and then the pastor gets a large whack. That's what I've found out in in my own background in the a past. A large, a large whack is a bit of a kind of derogatory way of describing it. Well, it's truthful. You, you, you would get, you would get in. Okay, within. I can speak about Adventism because that's what I'm part of, and that's what I understand, and I understand the system. In our in our church system, people have two ways of giving: tithe, and then what we would call free will offerings. And those free will offerings can take on various forms and sizes. That they're called free will offerings because people give what they want to what they want, so to speak. So, for instance, a person could give to I don't know a a famine relief, or they could give to for a building, or they could give for all sorts of different purposes of their own choice. Mm -hmm. Those are called free will offerings. Then we have the tithe. The tithe, as you, uh, I think you, you clearly understand that the tithe, the word tithe means ten percent, right? And that's where people give ten percent of their of their salary. Let's no, 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 no. It was, it was, it was never that at all. They... Uh, no, I'm, 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 I'm explaining to you what we oh, right. do. I see. Okay. As a church, I'm not. Yeah. Sorry, I beg your okay. pardon. I'm only using salary because it's, you know, it's the more common term that people will use now. But it's temperance. It's ten percent of a person's, uh, how do you say, of what they receive. There could be various ways in which they're receiving. Salary is one of them. Okay. But anyway, yes. so a person a person gives ten percent, and that ten percent goes to. In our cases, we the worldwide church is broken up into conferences. Okay, well, it's broken up into divisions and conferences. The most local would be a conference. So, for instance, in the UK, it's broken up into North North England Conference, South England Conference, and various other bits of the of, of, of the UK. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, so 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 a a member or a believer who lives in the South would pay. 10% of their income, or whatever the means that might be, to the to the church organization called the local conference, okay? Yes. That conference then is funding various things, including the ministry. It's funding buildings, <coughs> it's funding um, charitable works, giving, or, or various different things that they're just doing. It's funding schools, it's funding, and it's also funding the salary of the workers, okay? The workers don't get to choose their salaries. It, like in any organization, there was, there was, there are bodies which decide what those earnings are. And there's also, they're accountable in terms of what work you have to do for that salary, okay? And that's that system. And what happens is each local conference then pays upwards, 10% upwards until it gets to the top. And that's how you, we fund the overall organization. So no pastor has, has, has any hand in the local, how do you say, um, pot. So for instance, I pastor churches in Southampton. The members give. If I touch that money, directly myself, I'm fired. I'm not allowed to touch it. Mm -hmm. That money goes to the central organization and then there's rules that govern how that money should be used and how it should be distributed. That's how we run our tithing system within the 70 I mean, there's more complexities there, but I'm not gonna, you know, at least I think you'd get the basic idea, at least from what I've explained. Um, wh where does the Bible command a Christian to pay 10% of their income to a church organization? Well, our understanding is we, we build that based on the Old Testament into the New Testament. In other words, so we see that we see that 10% system preceding Judaism. So we see it going all the way back to Abraham with Jacob and we see it when we and as you've quoted 
a couple of texts from Leviticus, we see that system building in Judaism, but we see it predating that. So we don't see it as being uniquely so, so you, um, I mean, Judaic. Give me, we see, we see it as, give uh, me as a specific verse. A system for belief. We see it as, as a system for believers in terms of giving back towards to the cause. And then giving back the you, cause in an organized yeah. way. You, you, you know what I'm saying? But, but you, your question was how does this have, have application in the, in the New Testament? Yeah? There is no verse. That, that's your the, there is no verse in the New Testament that commands a New Why Testament Christian to pay Why are you Christian asking the question if you're telling me there isn't an answer to the question? Well, I have been looking. Why ask a question if you've loaded it? All right. It well, am I am I wrong? An am I wrong? Is is there a verse in the New Testament? I beg your pardon. Is there a verse in the New Testament that commands a Christian to pay a tithe? There isn't. There isn't. There isn't one single verse. It's a system. You have to. You have to look and understand the whole system of giving. Giving is not tithing. But I've giving. shown you from 1 Corinthians 16, 1, that when they gave, they gave to the saints. Now, concerning the collection for well, the that's saints... that's one example of giving. There, there, there are various examples of giving. Yeah, I'm not interested in giving. I, I do believe the New Testament practice is giving. I don't well, believe tithing, that... tithing is a form of giving. No, it's not. It was a form of taxation under the Old Covenant. There's two types of tithing in... In, ge in only Genesis, a government, only a government can do taxation. Can I? Yes. Can I? Can I just go through them? You can't call it taxation if it's not a government. A government, a church, a local church does not have the power to tax its members. The members have. What you would do is you you show them a system. They then have a free will to exercise that. System can I or not. make my point? We can't punish them if they don't give. Can I make my we point? We can't penalise them. Yeah, but you said it's taxation. It's can I make taxation. my point? Can I show you it's a form of taxation? But you're asking questions, but you don't want any answers. But you're not allowing me to speak. Carry on. There's two types of tithing. Before the law in Genesis 14, there is a pagan system of paying 10% of the spoils of war to the owner of the land on which that battle was fought. That was a pagan custom throughout the ancient pagan world. Now, if you chose not to give your 10%, then if the person whose battle you fought on uh, was powerful enough, you'd be fighting a battle against him. Okay, so that's the first type of tithing. Genesis 14, Abraham. Yeah, the spoils of war. I yes, that, that's got no connection whatsoever to New Covenant Christians today. New Covenant Christians are not in any way under some Abrahamic covenant or some Melchizedek covenant or they're, you know, somehow if you just believe in Jesus, you're damned because you must believe in Jesus and you're under some Abrahamic or Melchizedek covenant and you must give some sort of money. Um, if you believe in Jesus, you're damned. Where did that line come from? I didn't say that. I'm, I've said that is that's what... what I'm asking you to... That I'm, I'm, I'm that's not what to, I believe. That's why I'm asking... Yeah, I don't yeah, go to any church, but that's what I've been Paul, told. Paul, take a breath. Let me ask a question because I want to make sure I understand what you're saying. Well, you keep interrupting me, so I can't, I can't, I can't make a no, point. No, no, I, I just um, want you to go um, over the bit that you just said, because I, I wasn't sure that I understood it. So I want yes. You, I understood what you said. Some to religious the, people today... Some born again, I have found Jesus and I'm born again and I pay him. You pay your tithes to me, I collect those tithes. Okay? Some evangelical types will more or less tell you that if you believe in Jesus, you can't be saved. Because salvation is believing in Jesus plus being under the authority of a Pentecostal type pastor who is collecting your tithe because if you live today in the year 2021, you're somehow under some either Abrahamic covenant or some Melchizedek covenant, or this somehow applies to you. Now, I don't believe that. I, I, no, do I. I gave up on church many years ago. But that is what some people will teach you today, some particularly, particularly the TV preachers. And I'm just pointing out that Genesis 14 has no application to Christians today in the New Covenant. No Christian today is somehow deficient in their faith if they're not keeping some Abrahamic covenant or some Melchizedek covenant or they fail to pay 10% of their income to some um, Pentecostal TV preacher. That, that's just the point I'm making. So. I don't think in any of the answers I've, I've given or tried to give you 
that I've uh, in one instance uh, said that uh, people should be paying a tithe or, or or even a gift to some form of Pentecost. Pentecostal pastor or evangelical pastor. I've never said that. Yeah, I know, I but you, have, but you have said that people I, should I'm give money to the Seventh-day Adventist I Church. I wouldn't accept it. I don't accept direct gifts. Yes, I understand that, and they don't accept it directly. It's given to the Pentecostal Church or the Pentecostal ministry, and then the, um, the jet, the private jet, and the mansion, and the Bentley, is... Um, funds are provided out of that for the pastor, and the pastor will say, well, I "Look, know, I, 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 I only receive a half a million a year." Any of those I, I'm not accusing you of this. I'm talking about my own background. Okay, I'm not accusing yeah, you of this. You're using what you've experienced to come to condemn the entire system. Now, I'm saying to you that I operate yes, I in a think, system I think, which has I nothing think, to do with what you're describing. I think the entire system of modern day compulsory tithing to a church system or denomination is not biblical. We don't have compulsory tithing. Right, so can a person be a Seventh-day Adventist pastor and not tithe and be against tithing for today? Can a person be a Seventh-day Can a person be a Seventh-day Adventist pastor or leader? Can you be a leader in the Seventh-day Adventist church when you're diametrically opposed to tithing? You think it's um it's well, wrong it for Christians. It would be somewhat hypocritical because your salary comes from the tithing system. Well, it's not hypocritical because in the New Testament, people who led no, churches saying, were unpaid. You, your, question, your question related to Seventh Day Adventist pastors. Yeah. Okay. You said, can you be a Seventh Day Adventist pastor and be against the system of tithing Com that yes. we practice within the Seventh Day Adventist Church? Okay. Can you yeah. be a Seventh Day Adventist pastor? Yeah. But your salary comes from that system. So if you're against that system, then you should resign your position. Right. So you practice, So all church leaders in the Seventh-day Adventist Church are pro-tithing. They believe that tithing is for Christians today. We, we don't. We, we, we're responsible for the church that we pastor, for the churches that we pastor, the, the religion that we're part of. And we believe we go based on a biblical system. So I can't speak for all of Christianity. I wouldn't dare to do that. But in the Seventh-day Adventist church, do you have leaders, pastors or whatever the, the title is, who are against tithing and say, do not tithe because it's non-biblical? Look, I can't, I can't speak for all pastors. What I'm, what I'm saying to you is that the way that pastors are paid within the Seventh-day Adventist Church, they're paid a fixed salary. They're paid very well indeed. It's one of the best paid, one of actually, the, be, be, actually, because of the compulsory actually, tithing, they're actually, paid exceptionally well. Actually, that's not true. They're paid an I awful mean, lot more than Anglicans okay, and Methodists. In, in, I, don't, I, I don't know what Anglican pastors are paid or anything like that. Mm. I know what I'm paid. Mm -hmm. And I'm the pastor, mm -hmm. and it's you know, and it's not a secret because it's it, there's public documentation in relation to what we get paid, yes. and we're not very, we're not extremely well paid. We're paid an equivalent of the average salary in the UK. Okay. Although there but, would be the free house and the free car and so on. No, we don't receive any free houses or free cars or anything. So you have to provide your own accommodation. It's not provided for you. Yes. Okay, yes. all right, I wasn't aware of that. The place where I live for, I meet, well, I'm married myself and my wife, pay for our house. If I have a car, I pay for that car. Okay. Could, could I ask you, we, Genesis 14 has no relevance today. There is tithing under the law, which was food, not money. If you, certain trades were exempt from tithing, fishermen... It was tithing of goods, wasn't it? It was tithing of goods, wasn't it? So whatever their possessions were. No, so. it was agricultural produce. Leviticus 27, because 30. Because it was an agricultural system at that time. Right, so it was agricultural produce, but not, not fish. You didn't tithe on fish because it was only from the land of Israel. If you, if you had a farm outside of Israel, you didn't pay any tithe. And if you were an, a blacksmith or an agricultural worker who got paid money, you were exempt from tithing. So it's only landowners in the land of Israel who paid three tithes. Not one tithe. They didn't pay 10%. They paid three tithes. And there were between 10 and 13 offerings, which, um, which um, most okay, of the so people... Okay, so you have quite an understanding of the, yeah. of the system, of the Levitical system. Yeah, and that doesn't but, apply today. Okay, fine, but, but that's not what your problem is. Your problem is not with the Levitical system. Your problem is with any churches that have a system whereby um, 
their members give offerings. That's, no, that's no, 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 I've, 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 I've no, no problem with that because um, in 1 Corinthians 16, 1, um, there was a collection for the saints. So giving is, is biblical. But I don't believe in the New Testament tithing is is biblical i don't believe paul or peter or john ever pointed back to the levitical law and said ah you mr christian man who just be converted where's your 10 percent you are obliged because of this old testament passage to give 10 percent of your income although as i say the tithe never well, was 10 percent they, they paid three they paid three times it wasn't a contention Pardon? there wasn't i don't i'm not aware of any contentions in the new testament relating to tithing or giving giving well giving and tithing are two separate things i'm just pointing out there's no verse in the new testament that commands christians to pay a tithe what it, what it, what is it you're looking from for from me why do the seventh day adventist church advocate tithing when it's not found in the new testament it's not biblical because we would argue from the old and the New Testament, because we, we take our applications from the entire Bible, not just the New Testament. We're not simply a New Testament church, we're a, Bible, we're a biblical church. So we take our counsel from both the Old and the New Testament, and we put those all of that together in order to put together our, the principles by which we, we manage our lives, our Christian lives, and our churches. So we, we take principles from the entire Bible not just the New Testament and not just the Old Testament, you, but both together. You don't pick and choose. You, you apply everything in the Bible in the Old Testament exactly the way it is in the New Testament. For instance, uh, the law uh, of the uh, leather. Uh, I, I think you know that's not what I said. Well, well, if you if you don't because apply, we're not. We're, we're not we're well, then not you're in picking the same and choosing. Situation as Abraham, we're not in the same situation. As, we're not. We're not Jews. Right, so if you're not Jews, it says in Leviticus... I, I said to you that we take our principles by taking the entire Bible together, the New Testament and the Old Testament. A Jew does not take the New Testament. Right. We um, do. Tithing and the law was given for the children of Israel. That's Leviticus 27.34. May I read it? Which, which law are you talking about? The Mosaic law. These are the commandments which the Lord commanded Moses for the children of Israel on Mount Sinai. So the Mosaic laws are you talking about? Yeah. Or are you talking about the Ten Commandments? Or what are you talking about? I'm talking about the Mosaic law, Leviticus 27:34, and yeah, four I mean, verses yeah, earlier it talks the, about we tithing. Don't practice the, we don't practice the Mosaic, the Mosaic law in general. Particularly that which applies to the temple, because for us, the temple has no longer any application because Jesus already died in the cross, fulfilling everything in the temple. So we don't take the temple. We don't take the temple laws. I said that four verses earlier in Leviticus 27, 30, it talks about the tithe. Uh, and all the tithe of the land, that's the land of Israel, whether of the seed of the what, land what, or the fruit of... Could I, could I finish? Could I finish? Or the fruit of the tree, it yeah, is the I, Lord's, I it is to, holy to the Lord. I need to, I need to, I need to just say something. Is it possible for me just to say, can you remind me of your name? I've forgotten your name. Robert Skinner. Robert Skinner. Robert, I don't want to have... I'd, I'd like to have a productive sort of like conversation with you. From the beginning, all you've been doing is saying that anyone who's doing this is wrong. So you're not really looking to find, you're not really interested in a case for doing it because you've, you're, you, in your mind, you're fully persuaded that anyone who practices a tithing system is wrong to do it as a Christian, as a modern day Christian. So I, I'm not sure what it is you want me to, if you want, I can, I can I can send you. No, 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 no. I, I don't want to receive. The, I've been down the route of receiving stuff before where people just. Flood you don't me know what material. I'm going to send you. You can refuse, but you at least let me explain what I yeah. would send you. And then you can say, no, I don't want it. Right? I'm not interested in sending you the opinion of the church or whatever, but, but how we would form a biblical argument in favour of tithing. That's what I would send you. And you can read it or not read it. You can read it and reject it, disagree or agree. Um, look, That's if what I'm... I would send you. And it would, and it would give verses, texts and if... verses from the Old and the New Testament what, as, as to why we'd make an argument for 
two systems of giving, tithing and free will offerings or, or, or free gifts. I've no problem with giving at all. I've pointed out giving in 1 Corinthians 16.1. Look, it's, okay. it's 28 minutes past two. If I'm silent for 10 minutes and I don't say anything, would you like to explain why I... I am under some sort of obligation to give a tithe from the Bible. I, I never said you were. You're not. You're not part of our church, are you? No. Well, where does the Bible command Christians to give a tithe but I today? I just now said to you, I'm willing to send you something to describe. Well, I'm willing to listen. In, in, I'm willing to listen probably, now. In probably one. In probably one. Not more than two pages, and it would. It's going to be. You yeah. In detail by detail, but basically the. A simple way of making an argument is that we'd go back and we'd look at, okay, what did Abraham do? What did can Jacob we, can we do? do that now? What did, can we can we do that now? Uh, uh, it's not going to be. I'm going to have a limitation because I've got another meeting. I've got to be in by three o'clock, and I've got to be in. Sure. And I've got to get ready ready for that meeting. But that's why I was ready to send you. No, no, I no, 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 no. I, 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 I've had people and send me read stuff. And we, could, we could have another conversation. I'm happy. All right. I'm happy to have another conversation. But I want you to show me from the Bible. I was giving you a quick overview, but you stopped me. And I'm saying to you that we'd look at what did Abraham do? Because that's the first system we time we see tithing. Then we, the next Genesis time we see 14. tithing is with Jacob. Jacob, didn't pay, Jacob tithing, didn't pay a tithe. He vowed in Genesis 28 to pay a tithe. And you if, you uh, complain when I, when I interrupt you, but you won't allow me to get through a sentence. Okay, also... It can't be both ways. All right. Also, it's got to be both ways. I need to listen to you, and you also need to listen how to me. About, you can disagree. How about we talk... Listen. How about we talk for five minutes each, and the other is silent? You have five minutes, just, I have five minutes. You just now said to me you would be silent for ten minutes. You well, didn't succeed and you didn't seconds. say whether you agreed to that or not. You didn't say whether you agreed to that or not. Because I, I want to hear what minutes. your case I is. Five minutes. Pardon? I don't need five minutes. Right, I'll be silent for five minutes. It's 4.30. You've got five, 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 minutes. five, five minutes. I don't need five minutes. How we, how we would structure it is we'd look at, okay... What's the history of tithing in the Bible on the whole? We'd start with Abraham because that's the first time we see it. Next place we see it is is with Jacob. The next place we see it is in 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 Leviticus, right? Then we have there's some reference of, of tithing, particularly in Malachi, the last book of the Old Testament, and then we say, okay. Does any of this have any application in the New Testament? Is there anything in the New Testament that tells us about giving, about tithing, about any of those things? And we get some references with Jesus with, and, and with Paul. We get some references in the book of Hebrews. I'm giving a general overview. We look at all of that together and say, okay, now, does that have application for us today? We would argue, yes, we have some application for that today for a system of giving for you know as i say free will giving in other words where people can choose to give to particular causes or or a system for funding the, the church on whole in terms of its structural funding for its buildings for its schools for its colleges for its for its for its pastors and the various different things that we fund. And, and for that system, we are persuaded that the overall argument in the Bible is, is supportive of, of a tithing system. That's, that's, that's the argument. I don't need five minutes. I don't want to interrupt you, have I? Have you finished? No, I'm finished. That's all I needed okay. to say. Um, well, I'd say if you look at Genesis 14 closely, you're dealing with a pagan system of tithing where it, what's being tithed are the spoils of war. Now, this is written during the Bronze Age. A system of dividing the spoils of war, where if you fought a battle on somebody else's land... Was, was now, hold on, I didn't interrupt you and you've interrupted me. You never said that you were doing your bit yet. All right. Why don't we... Sp All right, all right, I... I'm not going to say anything. You okay. you say what no, you well, want to say. Let's, you, you, I won't speak. You do your. You, you say your bit. 
Well, with regard to Genesis 14, this was given during the Bronze Age, and it was a system of dividing the spoils of war. If you fought on a battle on somebody else's land, then the owner of that land got 10% of the spoils of war. This has no relationship whatsoever today to Britain in the year 2021. This is not the basis of some uh, church funding system uh, for today, and I'm not in any way accusing you, sir, of this, but I've, I've heard this all the time from my background in Pentecostal and Baptist type churches. Also notice, if you read it very carefully, that Abraham gave everything away. He, just, he didn't just give a tenth of all in Genesis 14, 20, but he says in verse 23 that I will take nothing from a thread to a sandal strap, that I will not take anything that is yours, lest you should say I have made Abraham rich. So he gave the other 90% away. So if this is a model for Christians today, then give everything away. If you earn uh, uh, £500 in a week, then tithe 50 and give the other 450 away. You can't pick and choose what you like in the Bible and say, I'm only going to do what I like in the Bible, ignore the rest. The um, Abrahamic covenant, the sign of that circumcision in Genesis 17, 10, uh, it says that Abraham... Every male child amongst you shall be circumcised. And he circumcised his household. He had um, household slaves. So this is a sign of a covenant circumcision. If what Abraham did is applicable for today, all Christians should be circumcised. And of course, the book of Acts strongly condemns that, as you will know. Abraham also offered burnt offerings. In Genesis 22 13. Then Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and there was behind him a ram caught in the thicket by its horns. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up for a burnt offering instead of his son. If Genesis 14 is for today, then Genesis 22 13 is for today. Christians must offer burnt offerings, Christians must be circumcised. There is even somewhere, I forget where it is in Genesis, the law of the lever. If your um, brother dies and he's married, then you have to marry your sister-in-law. Um, that's called the law of the lever. Now, is that for Christians for today? I can go into, and I won't, the other passages. I think that's in Genesis 38. Anyway, 38. I knew it's somewhere around verse 40, but thank you, verse 38, the law of the lever. Um, I'm not going to go into the other passages, but I would point out that they paid three ties of agricultural produce, not one. When you do the maths, because they had two cycles, a 50-year jubilee cycle when you're exempt from tithing, and a seven-year smita cycle when they're exempt from tithing. So every seven years they didn't pay any tithe, and every, every 50 years they were exempt from tithe. When you do the maths, because they had three tithes to pay, um, the tithe was either just under 20% or just under 18%, depending on how you work it out with offerings on top. Jacob... Um, probably didn't pay a tithe. He vowed to pay a tithe in Genesis 28, but he didn't pay it. And I could go into later on, that's probably why um, Judah was taken captive. Ten sons went down into Egypt, and one of them, a tenth, was taken prisoner by Joseph. Um, Malachi 3 is an offering. I know it's called a tithe, but one of the offerings, the Tamora Mazza, was called a tithe. Um, when you stand back from this and you look at this, and I'm not pointing the finger at you, sir, but my own background in the Pentecostal churches, I'm furious that I paid tithes. I was bullied to pay tithes, and it's just not biblical. And I'm not accusing you, sir, or the Seventh-day Adventists of this, but in the Pentecostal church, it's abuse, abuse, abuse. It's bullying people, and it's taking verses out of context to bully people. I'm not accusing a good man like you of this, sir. Uh, so I'm very dedicated to get to the bottom of this, because I'm convinced that one of the scams that we see in church today is a paid ministry. I think churches will run by a plurality of unpaid elders. That's the first thing I'd point out. And secondly, there is no tithing for Christians for today. It's old covenant under the Mosaic law, or it's pre law it's a pagan um, system in genesis 14 and it's not applicable to christians today thank you for letting me speak sir oh, that's absolutely no problem at all no, thanks for thanks for being willing to share i'm i listen to everything that you said i mean you're obviously 
you know, you're not a, a, a man who's just pulling things out of the air. You obviously, you know, have quite strong biblical knowledge. Um, I'm hated. I'm, I'm sorry for the, <laughs> the bad experiences that you've had. I, yeah. You know, I, and you, they're not, well, I know they're not unique to you because I've met, you know, various people who've had similar experiences. And I think it's very sad because it does nothing for the cause of the gospel. Well, I can't say very much now. Let me...